Kirstie has had a long history of self-diagnosis. Every time I turned around, it was one illness or another she was coming up with. My mom would call me a hypochondriac. My mother would tell me to suck it up half the time. When she was 10 years old, we went to the doctor and she said, I have prostate cancer. It's just gotten worse and worse as time's gone on. When she was living with me as an adult, I either had to take her to work or hire a sitter. I mean, how embarrassing that was. She thinks I've left her alone, but I have not ever left her alone or put her in harm's way. She was not a decent mom at all. My mom was an alcoholic when I was growing up. I did drink a lot, and I was not able to do 100% mothering. She just was not there. My mom would go out to go to the bar. Sometimes she wouldn't come home till 2 a.m. Sometimes she wouldn't come home till the next day. I would try to call her. She would ignore my phone calls. I'd have to call multiple bars. Sometimes she would tell the bar, don't tell her I'm here. I was like six years old. And that was quite terrifying to be home alone. My whole childhood, my mom instilled fear into me. She would tell me not to leave the house. She would tell me that people would kill me, rob me. If I left, I would be kidnapped. My daughter's never done drugs. She's never done alcohol. And she's not out on the streets. So I, I can at least say I did something good. <laughs> when I see my daughter, I see a lost soul. I'm afraid if my daughter continues this path, she's going to lose her fiance and end up in a mental institution. Okay, I'm glad you're here. Thank you. What is your reaction to your daughter saying that this all started in childhood because your role as a mother was dramatically insufficient? I agree with that. Uh -huh. I agree 100% with that. Um, I worked probably three jobs, sometimes two jobs, but um, when I wasn't working, I was out drinking. I was drinking a lot mm -hmm. every night, probably 365 days a year, mm -hmm. for at least three or four years mm -hmm. straight. As far as leaving her alone, I've, I've left her with my, my uncle. He was my roommate at one time. I've left her with a friend of mine. I always made sure someone was there in the house with her. She has said that she would sometimes call a bar that you frequented looking for you. Yes. Um, is that true? Yes. And listen, this is not a blame game for me I because that. that's over. Yeah. I can't change that. I'm looking for solutions right now. And she is going to be free from this if it's the last thing I do. Um, and you, you may have made some bad decisions then. You can be part of the solution now. A definition of agoraphobia is an extreme or irrational fear uh, of panic or anxiety when entering open or crowded places, uh, of leaving one's own home, or of being in places from which escape is difficult. Now, that is a truncated definition, but then let's look behind agoraphobia a little bit about where this comes from. Well, negative events in childhood and other stressful events, such as being attacked or mugged, are associated with the onset of agoraphobia. Individuals describe the family climate and child-rearing behavior as being characterized by reduced warmth and increased overprotection. Heritability of agoraphobia is 61%, most specific association with a genetic factor that represents proneness to phobia. So what we're saying here is that if a child grows up in a situation where there's a lack of warmth, emotional unavailability of a parent, mm -hmm. then that tends to set the child up to experience exactly what your daughter's experiencing. 